嚟緊呢，就我哋要開始個小組討論啦。咁呢，就、呃、首先就等我介紹下我哋，即、就、係、是、我哋三，我哋會邀請我哋三位發言嘅人啦，同埋主持呢入座啦。咁另外呢，就討論呢，就會將會係由香港理工大學實務教授李立文教授主持啦。咁教授呢，係用。即係英文去進行嘅。Then let me introduce Professor Professor Lemon Lee. Lemon is the professor of practice in the in the Hong Kong Poly U in okay specializing in ESG fintech and sustainable finance. He commands the Hong Kong Poly University Sustainable Finance Center and advises financial institution, policy maker, regulator, and company on various ESG aspects. Lemon expertise include board governance. Climate risk management, disclosure, stakeholder engagement, financial communication, and 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 all and a lot. Ah, uh, he served as the vice chair of uh, British Chamber Financial Services Committee. Previously, he was the partner at Deloitte, focusing on governance, risk, and compliance. Professor Lee, it's your show time. I pass the mic to you. Information from our uh, previous uh, panel speakers. We have about fifteen minutes, so we'll probably keep it uh, relatively short. To keep it a little bit more interactive for the people here in the room and uh, of course online as well, I let me see. Going to the right, I prepared a couple of questions as well to make it a little more interactive. Can I ask the uh, panel members to uh, get on、uh, our stage, please? Billy, Melanie, Judy, please take a seat. So maybe I'll, I'll let everyone here, but not everyone is putting out their phones, I guess. Can you maybe can people online see this QR code? If they can, please see, and then we can see the results very soon. I just to test. I put one in. What are the material sustainability risk in your organization? And while you do that, for for the sake of time, I will also already start asking questions to our esteemed panel members. So I think we're we're all in different organizations. It's great to hear, for example, from Judy. Safety is very important. You do a lot already on recycling. A lot of work that, of course, Sinoland doing ESG ratings on the buildings. Obviously, Billy's organization is working a lot with various third-party ecosystem player. So maybe I'll、um, the other way around. I'll start with the mail first. Maybe Billy, can you maybe start with、um, from your perspective, working with various ecosystem partners, supply chain. What are what are what do you see as the main material sustainability risk, and how do you address? How do you use your influence of your organization to make a change? Can you maybe share a minute or two your your views? So the in our in our organizations, we talk about DKSH. We are、uh, open solution to help our company to to help our client to grow. So supply chain to us is really an important things, and I think one of the major the sustainability with within DKSH is how we because in supply chain we need to move around our physical products, make sure that the the products arrive on time to the right place. So supply chain to us is really a, a big sustainability risk. With a lot of movement, how can we still the ensure that、uh, we we are we are having a sustainable transportation?、Uh, and now we know that there particularly there's something happening in the West Seas, so a lot of vessels need to be redirected. We are having seven to fourteen days uh, uh, in terms of the lead times of the. Of the shipment, and then we also need to、uh, burn a lot more the, on the fuel. So this is, I think, the, as one of the the major ways that we are having. And to address this, basically, we we have a good、uh, governance in terms of the supply chain sustainability in the group levels. We do have.、Uh, A team of people looking after our corporate supply chain sustainability. Locally, we do also have a supply chain sustainability champions in every market as well. No, thanks, thanks, Billy, for a very admirable what your organization is doing. I see already Melly is、uh, holding the mic already to、uh, to jump in. Yes. Uh. Well, very quickly, I I see that、uh, very interestingly, it's actually the risk or material what is most important. It really depends on. The key, what type of key stakeholders we are. So, as a as a conglomerate, we see that the investors will see things like climate risk, but if we are asking our employees, then gender equality is definitely something that they will look into it. So it really depends on the stakeholders. But one thing I also see is the regulations. So with the waste charging coming in, as Judith mentioned, I I can forecast that the waste will definitely. 
be a bit higher in the agenda upcoming for a lot of corporates and also biodiversity because TNFP is also kicking in. So I think these two will be some potential material topics that organization will be asked to increase in report. Got it. No, good to know. The cost, but if, if, if I look at the screen right now, we, we see that as well appear. By the way, I put the client part in. I think the cost when we see, we see regulation and standards, laws and regulations. I, I think it all makes sense. It, what are what do, is the minimum requirement that you need to do? Interesting that there's also a point around operational costs, by the way, here. The one that I see, for example, here, carbon emission from business travels, you probably know that uh, in the U.S., while we all talk about ESG, I think there are also stakeholders that are a little bit, how should I say, ESG, uh, well, sick and tired, I guess, because there's so much of it. Maybe fatigue is maybe a better word for that. And in some markets, definitely, I think some are, um, I think in the U.S., you don't need to uh, provide your scope free emissions. So there's a sort of a right sizing. I guess also maybe going to Judy from your perspective, I know you're one part of a big conglomerate. But you maybe instead of risk, what about opportunities? I mean, you. I think it's, it's the area of your- Around branding, around cost reduction, around, I don't know, customer community engagement, anything you could share? Right. Um, I think I echo with the two speakers here. Uh, legislation is definitely one, not just the waste charging coming up. Um, soon we'll have uh, the plastic reducer responsibility scheme kicking yeah. in 2025. But that gave us a great opportunity because of what we've been doing already in terms of eco design. And that the opportunity comes in not just for Swaco Cola, but the for the industry. How can we reduce waste at the source from the design stage? Um, how can we use more uh, higher recycled value material, higher recycled content material, light weighting? I didn't get to mention in my uh, in my presentation. Light weighting. Everything is aiming at reducing waste as source, and that is an opportunity for us. Um, yeah. No, thanks for that. We'll move quickly to the, the, the theme of the panel. The What are the key challenges to embed sustainability in your corporate strategy? I put out some just to, for people to ask. You can answer more than one question. Same, similar QR code. The way I try to do it is uh, sometimes I see organizations that are not even able to formulate their strategy. It's not the case here. I think there's also the thing that people that tend to be do a lot of public speaking around our organization that have a lot of good things to share. So I think capability is interesting. So maybe there's the will to make a change, but maybe they're not the people process tech capabilities. Okay, let's just see how the, the lines are moving. But maybe now I'll um, I'll, I'll go directly to, to Melanie. What about what about in, in, in your organization? It sounds like you have the top-down already buy-in, so you don't, you probably have that buy-in. What do you see as challenges or maybe best practice you could share to others? Okay, um, I mean, from speaking from a listed company point of view, I would say one of the challenges, we have so many ESG indices now to follow. I've mentioned a few just now, um, MSCI, Sustainability, Star Jones. And I, I graduated from Cambridge, but that's actually saying from Oxford that the more you learn, the more you don't know. So actually the more indices are coming in, the, we it's a bit difficult for listed companies uh, to actually prioritize which indices are most important because they all say that they're very important and they all measure it. Um, some are overlap, but they all measure different things at different times as well. So I, I think um, and with more and more ESG indices coming in, which one are more prioritized is actually depending on the operations of the company, but also which one investors buy the most. It's also very interesting as well. So um, I, I think with more and more indices and standards coming in, definitely I would say data monitoring and also having a unified measurements as well uh, would be something, I, I won't say it's a challenge, but I would think it's an opportunity for us to work together. No, no, I fully agree. I think definitely depending on which or, uh, sector you're in, you look at what what are the ESG ratings that your peers are being followed at. And of course, will there be questions from investors? Maybe maybe Billy from, from your side, uh, you help organizations, yeah. you focus on supply chain. What do you see as sort of challenges to embed sustainability into your day-to-day -day operations and strategy? I think to 
us uh, as an organization has shared, I think uh, from a corporate strategy point of view, exactly by then, like the other two speakers, our company do already have the uh, support from the management, they are willing to invest. So to us, actually, I do quite agree what the, the voting result the capability on the people as well. Because when we need to translate the strategy in the day in, day out, the execution, provided that our staff actually, they still do have a day job. Of course, we need to, they need to still carry on the sustainability in the execution. So how they combine this strategy into on the ground executions and then still not losing focus of their day jobs becomes our important thing. And I think this is where uh, as middle management, uh, they want to connect with the tops and the executions. So this is our responsibility to make sure that our people is being well trained, equipped, it. and I think the most important thing is that they need to believe and engage uh, and passion about this sustainability thing. If they take it as, a, oh, this is just a top-down car ad, we need to submit our homework, then it's not going to work. We need education to the people as well. Definitely good to hear that. I, I remember earlier, Melanie talked about mm -hmm. engaging training hours, maybe a little bit more onto data and tools for, for Judy then, I guess. Um, I guess for the organization and for investors, you have different operating units. Can you share a little bit from your organization? How do we track progress? Does every operating unit have KPIs that you follow and then it is then published to the external investors? Can you share a little bit, how do you monitor progress around your sustainability program? Because there are so many, and to be honest, all listed companies have some sort of people plan a profit or UNSDG. How do you uh, make sense out of that noise, I guess? Right. Um... <laughs> We have a lot of internal reporting, uh, monthly, quarterly, uh, annually, um, to keep track of the progress. And I am the person who is providing that data, consulting the data. Um, I, I don't think it's a challenge, but I think it brings reality into people's uh, um, agenda. When you see the number and it's not up to par, what can we do to bring that number up? Um, or what can we do to, to meet that target? Um, so data is definitely one thing and keeping track of it is one thing and having that transparency and data owner who owns the data. Um, that comes to another part about, um, I don't know about other organizations, but for us, sustainability is more of an enabler, uh, coordinator role, whereas the budget doesn't fall into our department to improve overall energy efficiency. But we have to translate that message across um, and to, to bring the solutions to the other teams to say, hey, maybe we can look into this. Are you willing to? So we are the connector, we are the coordinator, um, but often we don't have the authority. <laughs> but that, you know, soft power influence um, is what we're leveraging on. And um, it's a challenge, but it's where the excitement comes in as well. Got it. I, I definitely see that a lot in, uh, in dialogue with Chief Sustainability Officer. Your influence, you're not the CFO or CRO, so you do need to be good in influencing. Last question I put in also for the group, and feel free, I'll allow you also, of course, to ask questions directly to us, of course. Does your organization have a sustainability transition plan? I was speaking with the FCA head of uh, sustainability when he was in Hong Kong at some point, Sasha Sedan. He told me that they had this uh, transition planning task force where they look at action, ambition, and what was the accountability. I think definitely, I think all your organization and many others have that ambition or your strategy where you want to get to. I think we're moving to a stage where are the actions? How do you track it? How do you accountability or what, what Melanie and others said as well around the point of governance, is someone accountable? Just looking at the results. Okay, 19 people responded. That's pretty good. So more than people in here. So online people are responding as well, which is great. Okay, great. With action and action owners, still a, a lot don't have it, depending on what industry you're in, whether you're regulated or not, I guess. Any questions for our panel members or for me, for example, anyone in the audience that have any questions? Anyone, any questions? No, nope. no, quite late in the day. No, no worries. Maybe also, um, let me think of some questions as well. Earlier, oh, sorry, Felix has a question. Go ahead, of course. Which, which SDT? Is, um, which SDT is most challenging to you, which is available to your business? relevant to your business, but most challenging to you. 
Um, that's a good question. Well, because today is the International Women's Day, I would say gently. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I have to emphasize this is not because of sign of food, but I, I do sit in Hong Kong Chamber, Real Chamber of Commerce. I think, um, you know, in a way, it's a bit sad these days that even we are now in a modernized society, but overall speaking, women workers, women, female colleagues, and as compared to male colleagues, we're still not equal yet. And yes, um, Hong Kong Stock Exchange is kicking in the new um, policies that where board directors will need to have at least one female on board. But if you think about it, it's like where well, yes, she's moving so fast, but the regulation is not kicking in until 2025. And if we're looking at overall as, as a listed company, an Asia company in Hong Kong, female, management, the number of racial is actually still lower than many other cities internationally. And I, Hong Kong being an international city, I feel that we are still a bit lag behind in terms of the equality between female workers and, and male workers. And, and on that note, um, wellness, I want to bring in, we don't talk a lot about wellness today, but um, even Sino Group now, we're looking at how we can treat our female colleagues with better wellness. For instance, a lot of colleagues say we need to do it in a month. So um, we do have a project in One North where we do actually offer um, babysitting facilities and kids playing facilities so that the moms can bring the kids to play around while the moms have meetings. So um, also flexible working hours for colleagues, female colleagues that needs to be a working mom as well as a home mom as well. So, so I feel these kind of wellness for female colleagues, overall speaking, and not behind of Sino, but overall, I think Hong Kong has a lot to catch up. Being today is the International Women's Day. I fully, fully agree with you there, of course. Also, because uh, there is a demand for talent, you want to nurture talent. So, yeah, mm. exactly. And maybe, is there any question? Other question? Uh, can I follow up? Okay. I think a lot of companies are, are SME. Um, how could I take your, may I have your, your the panel advice? if the, most of the company are SME. How could SME solve the gender equality, gender equality, gender equality problems? Yeah, because most of the um, SME they don't have a lot of resources that you mentioned to okay. provide to support the 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 women. Then it may be quite challenged to 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 mark a lot of the company in Hong Kong that they don't have this kind of um, resources. That there, there must be some kind of benefit that tell the boss to convince the boss that we should um, provide more flexibility to the woman, but not to the man. Okay, then, then there may be, may be some, some disagreement in, in internal issue. I don't know. Yeah, I'll just take it. Uh, well, I think first of all, sometimes not everything costs money. And I think that's a mindset we need to correct everybody. Sustainability doesn't necessarily mean everything costs money. Sometimes it's the governance and policy. So for instance, for Sino, we set a 2030 sustainability visions to have all the females um, um, actually equally paid to male. These cost zero money. It's just a matter of setting policies and, and also targets. So I think start with the baby steps is setting targets to make female and male be equal. This called nothing. It's just a matter of governance. And I think that's something that SME can also learn from each other in that point. But I should leave their answers to, to, the, to the two as well. Yeah, although I think none of us uh, come from SME, we all are big uh, organizations. But I think the, um, echoing the, the previous speakers uh, just said, I think it's a belief. Uh, we need, or all need to correct our mindset. Sustainability is not about spending money. This is the, the wrongest. Uh, uh, mindset that we need to correct sustainability actually if you believe in it if you do it right actually it helps your company instead of it is an extra burden or extra expenses i think from the top of our dksh company from our board of director chairman they all believe it we we i still we call it in a town hall that uh when a chairman talks about it that as an uh, employee asks the questions uh, we talk about our, our profitability, we want to go, then why we still invest in a lot in, in sustainability. Then this is the exactly the, the answer from our chairman that saying that this don't take it as an expense. You spend something now apparently, but actually in another way, somewhere, somehow you get even bigger return. This is an investment, not an expenses. I fully agree with you. While while of course a lot of organizations talk about it, talk about all the costs to meet regulations and laws, which does cost money. But at the same time, new talent, they do think it's an important topic. Would I join this firm versus another firm? Yeah, it, it does matter, I think. So I think that with that, we are, time is flying. We're already <laughs> at five o'clock. Is there anything that you want to share with all sort of a call for action that you want to share? 
I know, I don't know, visit your shot team plans or? Oh, you are, um, we, our museum is under renovation at the moment, but after it's done, maybe later in the year, um, welcome to, to come for a tour. Um, but I think one takeaway is that I like the audience to, to go home with, um, is that, you know, we cycle. Practice recycling at home. Practice recycling at where you are, your office building, your, um, your, your estate, uh, and and it comes from behavior change. And research shows that it takes twenty one days to build a good habit. So do that. Start doing that. Um, it'll be a better Hong Kong for all of us. Very good advice. Yeah. And I'm just going to align with today's theme is actually learn from one another, be it big or small, because, um, and exactly that's why Green House is doing a great job is actually to have an award like this. So even for us, we, we do a lot of benchmarking. We do benchmarking every two weeks um, to learn from each other, to see what we can do better together. So I think um, really uh, we need to learn from each other more. We need to work harder together. And best practices is actually, it's not just from the big companies, but sometimes SMEs also actually have great best practice we can all learn. So learning from each other, I would say that's a very good takeaway that I wish everybody can align today. I think my call out would be start to measure your sustainability the ob objective. Whenever you start to measure it, you can manage it. And gradually, when people see you are measuring it, there will be improvement laterally because they know at least people need recognitions we need to see the progress then we will continue the effort we will know that the effort really worth it so start measuring it well, that's a great end of the panel collaboration dialogue be the change that you want to see in the world i guess so with that thanks to organization for having us thanks for the panelists big applause for the panelists All right thank you thank you Queen 台上三分鐘 Subsidiability 好,那就,呃,好多謝大家啦,咁呢,就另外一樣嘢就話同,呃,都講返少少啦,今日嘅所有活動嘅PowerPoint啦,同埋,即係今日嘅演出呢,其實我哋都會錄咗落嚟